Hello everybody and welcome to Automate with Jonathan. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to execute a search using the YouTube API and return a list of results. And we're going to go through some of the information we can get out of those results. If you get anything out of this video, please hit the like button, leave me a comment, and most of all, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 1,000 views. If you subscribe, it would, it would just mean the world to me. Thank you so much. So let's get right down to it. If you're a total noob when it comes to using the YouTube API, uh, this is the library we use to execute uh, a, a request. Uh, to the YouTube API and return us a response, which that we, that we can then manipulate. So Google API client is the first library you must import, and then it's the dot discovery. And then from there, we can build out our requests. So let me get, let me get more into, de into detail with that. So the Google API client dot discovery dot build method is a is what we're going to call and, we're, and into that method we're going to pass three variables into it variable number one is the service name because remember the google api client it, it encompasses many different services that google might offer so youtube is just the name of the service all lowercase the api version is the v3 because we're using the v3 api and then your developer key is going to be the third one the developer key is is something you generate I think it's from a Google Cloud platform, but it will look something like this, you know, or it'll just be a string of characters and numbers. Um, mine, oh shoot. All right, there we go. Mine is private.devkey because in this private folder, I've hidden my, my developer key so that none of y'all can steal my key. <laughs> Never know. And so once we have built this YouTube object using the Google API client dot discovery dot build method, taking those three variables, what we then do is we, we create a request by uh, using, by calling this YouTube object and then running the search function and then dot list. So there's a handful of, uh, of functions that the YouTube API has. And in order to do a search, we're gonna do the search. Uh, we're gonna use the search function. There's other functions like channel or videos, like where videos is going to, uh, videos is going to return different information, right? And we're just executing a search and searches are going to return us a different type of information. But if I wanted to get like statistics about a video, like the length of a video or the number of views or likes, I would use the videos method and then dot list. But I digress, that's a different topic. But this is this, we're gonna be running the search method here, dot list, and into that we're gonna pass part, which is gonna be the snippet, Q, which is the search requests as a string. Now, in this example, I'm just using the search request whistling diesel, the number of results, you you can change this to like 10. It might take, you know, it might take more. I don't know what the max is. Let's just try 100 just for fun. We'll see if we can top it out. The order is the same thing you see in the search, order by date, view count, things like that. And then the type is video. We don't want shorts. We don't want playlists. Um, there's, there's different things or channels, you know. We might be, you can select different types of content to return. Once we've built our request by uh, setting it equal to this YouTube object dot search dot list, we're then going to run response equals request dot execute, the execute method, and then and then I'm just using the pretty print library, which is totally not necessary, but I'm using it because it formats the response in a more human readable method. So let's run it. We'll see if we get a hundred results back. We'll see if that's too much. Oh, that's huge. But do you see how quickly that came back? Um, it's fantastic. I'm curious now. Let's see if we can do a thousand. Will it return 1,000 results? Does this look like a thousand? I don't know if that's actually 1,000. Um, could be. Probably not, though. Let's take her back to 10. And we're going to go back through. What can we look at? 
you know, it, maybe it's best to just do one so we don't get too confused. So we've run this. Here is our one item. Now let's go back through and, and start drilling into this. So let's say we want to get the E, the e tag. First, we're going to have to do items. And let's just rerun it. Uh, yeah, no, let's just rerun it. And this this part here should disappear because because I'm I'm returning items. Nope, didn't disappear. Whatever. Items of zero. Maybe this is what we need to do. Oh, we're, we're still drilling down. I don't know. And then maybe we had to uh, ID. And kind. Oops. So here, I'll tell, I'll show you why that didn't because we had this here. I just totally made a mistake. Whoops. Yeah, there you go. So let's go back. Now that first E tag should be disappeared. Yep, the first one is, right? So then we can look at these four here. One, two, three, four. So the next uh, key we can drill into could be, let's just say, well, what do, it depends. What do you want to see? Uh, number one item is Keith86. So we could do items dot zero dot snippet and then channel title so hopefully this returns Keith 86 there you go so that's how you drill into the uh, response request uh, you know the request response execute uh, side of, of using the YouTube API and, and executing searches. So thank you so much for watching. If you got anything out of this, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I do tutorials like this all the time of just, you know, me telling you straight up how to do specific use cases. We upload it, tell you the use case. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Bye-bye.